Hello everyone. Let's go ahead and try to factor this expression, shall we? We have x squared minus y squared minus 4x minus 8y minus 12. And we're going to factor this expression. Uh, I'll make an attempt first. And I want to factor this because this is difference of two squares, x plus y, x minus y. And then I have this negative 4. I could probably take out a negative 4, can't I? That'll give me x plus 2y plus 3. But unfortunately, we do not get any common factors from here. So this method is not going to work. All right, let's go ahead and proceed with the second method. So we're going to go ahead and separate the x's and y's first, x squared minus 4x minus y squared minus 8y minus 12. And we want to be able to factor this. We're going to go ahead and complete the squares. Notice that x squared minus 4x can be followed by a plus 4. That'll make a perfect square. And then for the y squared, I can put out a minus sign. And inside, I have y squared plus 8y. To complete the square, I need half of 8 squared, which is 16. And notice that 4 minus 16 is equal to negative 12. So we're good in that sense. Beautiful. Because this gives us a difference of two squares. Take a look. We have x squared minus 4x plus 4, which is a perfect square. I can write it as x minus 2 quantity squared. And the second one can be written as y plus 4 quantity squared. Again, this is a difference of two squares, which we call dots. Now, how do you factor dots? You can just use the formula. Remember the pattern? a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b. So this is my a, this is my b. So we can basically factor this as x minus 2 plus y plus 4. I want to write the plus sign first. And then x minus 2 minus y minus 4. So those should be the factors, but let's go ahead and rearrange these terms and kind of make them nicer. x plus y, negative 2 plus 4, that's going to be a positive 2. And then x minus y minus 6. So those are going to be the factors. If you don't believe that, go ahead and distribute. You should be getting the original expression. Make sense? So this is the second method. As you know, the first method did not work. Let's go ahead and take a look at the third method. I could probably solve this problem a little differently too. Here's the third method. We're going to go ahead and take this expression that we're supposed to factor and set it equal to zero. Why are we doing it? Because we want to turn this into an equation, an expression turned into an equation, because now we can solve it. We cannot solve an expression. We can only factor it. We can multiply it by something or divide by something, but not solve it. So now we set it equal to zero. But what, what are we going to do at the end? Whatever we get from there, we're going to set it equal to zero too. Hopefully, that'll give us the factors. Let's see how that plays out. First of all, I noticed, and I hope you noticed too, that this equation is actually quadratic. How is that quadratic? Notice that if I kind of write these, maybe use a different color here. This is x squared and this is x, right? You probably noticed that, okay, I do have a quadratic in x, but isn't it quadratic in y too? Yes, but I don't care. I want to focus on x. If you want to focus on y, that's fine too. So, if this is quadratic in x, can't I use the quadratic formula? Absolutely. So let's go ahead and use it. But before that, let's go ahead and put everything uh, that's negative besides the negative 4x in parentheses because that's going to make up my constant term with the minus sign. Make sense? So now I have the x squared and I have the x. So this is quadratic in x. Make sense? Okay, if you look at the coefficients, the coefficient of x squared is 1, the coefficient of x is negative 4, and this is my constant term. So let's use the quadratic formula, but before that, instead of writing the delta over and over, let's just find delta, simplify it as much as possible, and then plug it back in to the formula. And what is the formula? It is negative b plus minus the square root of delta over 2a. Remember, this is the quadratic formula in a shorter form. So we're going to go ahead and evaluate delta from here, which is the discriminant. And delta is b squared minus 4ac. Remember that? So we're going to go ahead and evaluate it. b is negative 4, so it's going to be 16 minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c. But notice that c has a minus sign. Double minus will turn into a plus sign. And this is going to be my delta. Let's go ahead and simplify it. Delta can be written as after distribution, 4y squared plus 32y 
plus 48 plus 16 which is gonna make 64 and if you factor out a 4 here you're gonna get y squared plus 8y plus 16 which is a perfect square and that's just perfect isn't it great we want delta to be a perfect square which means we can easily square root it and we need to square root remember in the formula you must square root the delta so let's go ahead and plug it in we know what b is b is negative 4 so negative b is the opposite which is 4 plus minus the square root of delta oh by the way i forgot to write this as a perfect square even though i said okay this is a perfect square but what is that equal to or equivalent to it's actually four times y plus 4 squared beautiful and if you didn't take the 4 out you could also write it as 4y plus 8 uh, quantity squared I mean 2y plus 8 sorry because you have to turn it into 2 if you're going to put it inside anyways it's the same thing now let's go ahead and write x which is negative b plus minus the square root of delta aha uh -huh, this is where the magic or math magic happens because we can easily square root this can't we yes so let's go ahead and simplify this okay how do we simplify this we can actually with the plus minus sign we can factor it out as i mean take it out as two times y plus four but do not forget the plus minus sign and you can actually divide everything by two that's going to give you two plus minus y plus four and that actually gives you two y values let's go ahead and write each one x equals or two x values 2 plus y plus 4, which means x minus y minus 6 equals 0, or x equals 2 minus y minus 4, which means x plus y plus 2 is equal to 0. Now notice that these came from this expression, original expression, right? This one, and now they will basically make up the factors because if each one is 0, then the product will be 0. So we get the following product, which is actually equal or equivalent to the original product. And what is that supposed to mean? It just means that our expression, which was given as x squared minus y squared minus 4x minus 8y minus 12 can be factored as follows. And our goal was to factor it, so the factoring is done. You can totally forget about the zero and just focus on the factors. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and if you know of any other methods, please let us know. That will be considered the fourth method, maybe even the fifth method. I'm pretty sure there are other ways to approach the problem. Anyways, until next time, bye-bye.